Well, my favorite memories of the library are in incredibly hot summer afternoons in Ann Arbor, where I was a little kid, lying on the library floor and reading book after book after book after book with my mom next to me. And I read Harriet the Spy that way, and I read Pippi Longstocking that way, and later I read Marjorie Morningstar that way. I read The Bluest Eye that way, and I remember exactly what those books looked and smelled and felt like in the Ann Arbor Public Library, now the Ann Arbor District Library, where I last year got to go and read from one of my books, which was like a thrilling childhood dream come true. Libraries fostered my love of reading because they were places I loved to go and they had every possible book and they had in them beautiful, thoughtful people guiding me toward books that would matter to me particularly. And the librarians at the Anna Republic Library when I was a kid did a very good job picking books for me. And my parents also helped that way as well, of course. Well, um, my school librarian when I was a little kid, whose name was Miss Detweiler, I based a teacher in my book, Big Girl Small, on her because she was so loving and caring. And she used to read us the first few pages of a book. And then we would all be so inspired to read it that we would fight savagely over who got to take it out of the library that week. And my daughters, who go to Chicago's Nettlehorst Public School, love their library teacher, Miss Kupak. And they talk every time they have library class. That's the rose of their day at night when we play Rose and Thorn. The rose of your day is the best thing that happened all day, and it's invariably that they had library class with Miss Kupak. I use it for research. In fact, many of the books I used and read for Big Girl Small, I checked out of the New York Public Library because I was living in Manhattan at the time. Um, and I would order the books online, and then they would be waiting half a block away. I read dozens and dozens of books. And I use the Chicago Public Library to take my kids. It's right around the corner from their school, and we go there after school, and we sit, and we create huge stacks of delicious books, and then we just burn through them. I think it's deeply disturbing. I think schools and libraries and art programs and poetry projects should be funded in America. I think it's unequivocal and obvious that we need centers of communication and learning and reading that are free for kids and free for grown-ups. I have a bracelet, an I Read Band Books bracelet, which just broke because I wore it every day and finally the elastic that held the band books together <laughs> snapped and I'm having it re-strung. I think obviously banning books is a ludicrous and antique way of stopping communication and communication between people is essential if we're going to move forward as a society. My latest project is actually a YA book. It's called Blind and it's about a teenager who loses her eyesight in an accident and has to reimagine how she's going to make sense of the world, how she's going to see and how she's going to talk about what she sees and how she's going to grow up without the sight she was used to. It's called Blind.